In this video, we will show the configuration process for the OCPP to mod this gateway. From the physical connection of the gateway to the addition of chargers with a small glimpse into the available gateway modes. First, let's see the connection steps. To power up the gateway, connect the positive, negative, and ground cables to the matching poles of the power connector on the lower left. To configure the gateway, use the Ethernet port on the lower right. Keep in mind that the gateway and the OCPP chargers must be connected to the same network, so you may need to use a switch with multiple ports. Configuration is carried out through the Intesis Maps configuration tool. Select the corresponding template from the new project window, selecting Modbus as the BNS protocol first, and then double-click the OCPP template from the templates list. This will load the project automatically, leading us to the general configuration. Here, we must focus on the connection section. As the charger will be connected to the gateway through its IP address, we must define a static IP address for the gateway. To do so, we unmark the Enable DHCP checkbox. In this case, we must enter the IP address. Netmask and default gateway fields, but this may vary depending on your network settings. Next, we will click Change to define a password for the project. Make sure to remember this password as you will need it when we reconnect to the gateway once we have sent the project. Whenever we make changes to the configuration, an asterisk will show up on the tab to remind us that we should save these changes. To do so, you can use the project menu or simply press Ctrl S. After saving the project, we will send it to the gateway, and for that, we must connect to it. Moving to the connection tab, we will see the discovered gateways on the left, with the ones matching our current project shown in black. To connect to the gateway, select it and click the connect button. As we still haven't sent the current project, the password is still the default one, admin in lowercase. Once connected, the status bar at the bottom will turn blue and show some information about the connection. We can now send the project to the gateway. This is done on the Receive Send tab. Click the Send button. After a few seconds, the gateway will reboot. Therefore, we need to reconnect. Return to the Connection tab. You may need to refresh a couple of times before the gateway shows up again. Before connecting again, remember to update the password with the current one we defined for this project. Now that we are connected to the gateway again, change to the OCPP section of the Configuration tab. Here, we will search for chargers on the network. As mentioned before, the charger connects to the gateway through the gateway's IP address, and because of this, before we begin with the scan, we must ensure the charger has been configured accordingly. This configuration will vary for each charger, but it usually only requires the definition of an OCPP server. As a general rule, this element follows this pattern. WS colon slash slash for WebSocket. An IP address, in this case, the one from the gateway, followed by a colon. A port, which is 9000 by default. A slash and the charger ID. With the charger correctly configured, we can return to maps and initiate the scan to detect it by clicking the scan button. A warning message about the charger configuration will pop up. We can ignore it as we have already done our homework. Click the Start Explore button and the charger will appear in the new chargers detected box. To add it, mark the checkbox to its left. The charger can be added to the existing chargers configured list or just replace them. This time, we will replace them. Click Apply to save the changes. All that is left is to save the project with the charger added and send it to the gateway again through the Receive Send tab. Just like before, the gateway will reboot, so we have to connect again. Once connected, we can use the Diagnostic tab to make sure the charger is communicating correctly.
Sure enough, as we can see, it's populating the signals with information from the charger. Mission accomplished. We'll finish this video by taking a look at the different modes available for the gateway, which can be selected in the OCPP configuration section. The gateway offers two modes, BMS Central System and OCPP Central System. With BMS Central System, the gateway, together with the BMS, takes the role of the OCPP Central System. As such, this mode offers a higher number of signals, as we can see here, to manage users, charging sessions, consumption, and more. It also requires extensive programming of sequences. And for this reason, this mode is intended to be used by integrators with a deep knowledge of both Modbus and OCPP. The other mode is OCPP Central System. In this mode, the gateway acts as a bridge between the OCPP elements and the BMS. Its main function is to monitor and allow the transfer of some data between the OCPP installation, to which we connect with here by entering its host, and port, and the Modbus-based BMS. In OCPP central system mode, the Modbus BMS side is limited to monitoring and supervisory tasks. Because of this, the number of signals available is considerably lower, and as this mode delegates most of the tasks to the OCPP central system, it can be considered noticeably more manageable. Besides the main gateway modes in this section, we can also find the smart charging operations. This feature, available for both gateway modes, enables additional signals, which you can see here. These signals allow you to specify how and when to influence the charge power or current from the gateway. They are defined via charging profiles, which are added through forms, clicking the Configure button. These charging profiles are defined in three sections. General charging schedule, and schedule periods. Once the charging profile has been created, we can use the commissioning function in the general tab to connect to the charger. Check if the created profile is compatible with the charger. And if so, send the profile to the charger. These charging profiles are saved as part of the Intesis Maps project. And this completes our brief look at how to configure the OCPP to Modbus Gateway. You can find more information on the related documentation, and as always, don't hesitate to contact us should you have any questions. Thanks for watching.